Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church here in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm Pastor George Ruish. It's a joy to have you with us the second Sunday after Easter as we reflect on the scripture reading of Doubting Thomas and how Christ has assured us in our own lives that he is always with us, he is always present, and that he truly has risen. I invite you to join me in our opening hymn today, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Our service now continues with our opening versicles. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our intro at this morning is from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. 
beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or if this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were found worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, 
and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service now continues with our next hymn, The Day of Resurrection. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear Christian friends, another church year has reached its peak. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. During the weeks before that, we marched onward, slowly but surely, toward the cross. We listened as the crowds cried out for his blood. We watched as the soldiers beat and mocked him. We sat silently as the tomb was closed. We waited, and we waited, and with great joy, we heard the trumpet sound to signal that Christ was raised from the dead. But just as we have the joy of celebrating Easter every year, we also get to hear the story of Doubting Thomas. Poor, poor Doubting Thomas. To think that even 2,000 years after he passed from this life on to the next, we're still using his name to mean those who doubt something really obvious and important of all the things to be remembered for. I imagine Thomas would have rather that he be forgotten altogether than to be remembered as the one who didn't believe Jesus was raised. It's almost as if we think he doubted on purpose. I mean, come on. He must have been, right? It was Jesus, after all. 
Thomas saw the miracles that Jesus performed. Thomas saw the healings. Thomas hung on every word that fell from the lips of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thomas was a disciple. More than that, an apostle. Thomas had a front row seat to nearly every event in the Gospels. And all the other disciples believe that Jesus has risen, right? Well, come to think of it, the other disciples weren't much better about keeping the faith. Peter abandoned Jesus and pretended not to know him. And actually, if you remember the Easter reading from Luke, when Mary Magdalene and the other women came and told the disciples that they saw Jesus alive, almost all of them thought it was just a stupid rumor. Well, now it gets a little more complicated, doesn't it? It's easy enough to point out this one guy, Thomas, for doubting. Silly, silly Thomas. But when we're talking about nearly all the 12 disciples, it becomes a little more difficult. You know, I've often talked with people who have either left the church or, or doubted their faith in some serious way. And I've heard something like this. Listen, if I had seen Jesus with my own eyes, if I had lived during his time, if I had seen the miracles for myself, then I would have no problem believing. But when you give me this big book that's thousands of pages long and thousands of years old and tell me to read it and just believe what it says, well, I can't do that. If only I had seen these things happen with my own eyes. Well, that seems reasonable, right? Because doubting it's a reasonable doubt. But what we realize in today's reading is that even those who had seen it with their own eyes had trouble believing it too. If there's anything that our gospel reading tells us, it's that doubt is something everyone deals with. Think about it. Here you have these disciples who just dropped what they were doing, fishing, collecting taxes, whatever, and just started following Jesus. There must have been something that drew them to him. There must have been some deep spiritual reason why this guy was different. And they believed him enough to drop what they were doing and follow him. Yet when Jesus was crucified, as he said he would be, they were at a complete loss. Jesus told them specifically that he would be handed over and crucified and would rise again. And yet, after Jesus was handed over and crucified, the disciples find themselves completely baffled as to what might happen next. And so, although history blames Thomas for his doubts, it's pretty clear that all of them had trouble believing what they were seeing. But at the end of the day, what was so hard for them to believe? The resurrection itself? Well, that seems like a reasonable answer. Doubting the resurrection would seem on its face to be a reasonable doubt. Dead people don't rise, right? Not usually, anyway. Except that these disciples saw Jesus raise people from the dead. They saw it with their own eyes. And after seeing those miracles, it shouldn't be that hard to believe that Jesus could be raised himself, especially after he told them what was going to happen. So what was so hard for them to believe? I think we have to go back to the beginning of our gospel text from John. At the very beginning of this reading, Jesus appears to them in a locked room. And what does he say? What is the very first word that comes out of his mouth? After Jesus Christ had fundamentally altered the universe, after he had destroyed death itself, after he had fulfilled thousands of years of prophecy and descended into hell and rose again, what was the first word he said to them? Peace. Peace be with you. And then what's the first thing he did after saying that? He showed them his hands and he showed them his side. And so this peace that Jesus is offering the disciples when he says, peace be with you, is not the kind of peace where you put two fingers up, sway a lighter over your head and sing Kumbaya while you get in touch with nature. This peace Jesus proclaims to them is not a warm and fuzzy kind of peace where everybody gets along. This peace that Jesus offers them corresponds directly to his hands and his side. That peace comes from those wounds. Those wounds are the flesh and blood proof that the disciples' sins had been forgiven. Without the wounds, their sin would not have been paid for. Without the resurrection, Jesus would have been just another in a long line of great moral teachers. But when you have those wounds on the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, you have the redemption of mankind. 
So what was so hard for them to believe? I don't think it was just the resurrection. I think the disciples also had trouble believing in the peace that Jesus offered them. And I think every one of you has been in the same position as them. Put yourself in this situation. Let's pretend for a moment that you are millions of dollars in debt. Every day you open your mail to find foreclosure notices and court documents. Your bankruptcy attorneys have quit representing you because you can't pay. You've lost your home and your cars. You're sorting the bills by first, second, and third notices so they don't go into collection. You're drowning. And then someone comes along, appears out of nowhere in front of you, and says, peace be with you. And then shows you proof stating that all your debts have been paid. Would you believe it? Could you believe it? Or would it seem too good to be true? How many of you have trouble believing in the peace that Christ offers? I think all of us have been there, haven't we? We look at our lives. We look at the stupid things we've done. We look at the way we've treated people. We look at the way we've treated ourselves. Some of our sins have been made public and brought us shame and grief. Other sins we've managed to slip under the rug and hide from other people, but still torture our consciences. We stay up nights, tossing and turning over all the regrets we have, all the things we should have done differently, all the ways we failed to be the people God created us to be. So when this Jesus comes along and says to you, peace be with you, it's not an easy thing to hear. It's not an easy thing to believe. You look at your home life and you see chaos, fighting, bickering, money problems, betrayal, and sorrow. You look at the world around you and you see disease, death, decay, war, bloodshed, starvation, joblessness, homelessness, and so much else. And you wonder, where is this peace, Jesus? Where is it? You said, peace be with me, but I sure don't feel very peaceful. So where is it? The answer Jesus gives is this. That peace you've been searching for, that peace you so desperately want, that peace that seems so far away from you so much of the time is right here in my hands and my side. You see, the peace of the Christian church, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace of the Lord that your pastors declare will be with you always, week after week after week, that peace had to be earned. That peace is not a wish or a nice thing to say. Every time you hear the word peace in church, we're talking about the water and blood poured out from Jesus' side and his hands. Every time you hear one of your pastors say the word peace, you should be thinking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That peace that you so deeply long for came to you when Jesus Christ took all of your sins onto himself, when he literally had the weight of the world on his shoulders and died under it. He died for you. And when he rose from the dead, the message he had for the disciples, the first word out of his mouth when he appeared to them in that room was this. Peace. Peace be with you. And then to further offer them his peace, he gave them the authority to forgive the sins of his people on his behalf. Peace. Peace be with you, he said. Peace. So when you're sitting at home in isolation, refreshing the coronavirus website every couple of hours as the numbers climb, when you get the notice from your job that your hours just got cut, when it seems that peace is something you can only dream about, just look to the cross. Your peace is there. True peace is not hiding in the deep caverns of your mind, nor is it hiding in your heart somewhere to be found. Real peace is something powerful and wonderful and amazing that comes right to you from the cross and empty tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins have been forgiven. Your debt has been paid. And Jesus Christ offers you peace, both now and in eternity. To paraphrase our scripture reading this morning, blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe in this peace. Blessed are they who cling to the hope of this peace until their last dying breath, because peace in Jesus Christ is exactly what they'll find. Amen. Now may the peace of God, see that, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Our service now continues with Kyrie and prayers. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you. For you answer me. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my feet for grace. Let us pray. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and glorious presence. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy, God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders in the paths of peace and justice. Bless us with wise, faithful, and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purpose. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that in our neighborhoods and communities we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all that would threaten our homes and families. Grant us deliverance from all disease, especially COVID-19. And protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the unemployed and the underemployed, to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, and to those whose death draws near. At this time, if you're a member of Grace Lutheran Church, I would invite you to pray over the petitions you received by email. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of hope, be with those who grieve the loss of those whom they love. 
Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting life to all who die in Christ. Deliver us from the distractions of things that do not matter, that we may focus on the needful things of your word, so be found faithful when our Lord returns in his glory. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth, with the fruits of our honest labors, and with a kind and generous heart. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices along with the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our gratitude and thanksgiving. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of the poor, that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial both for us and for all whom we have prayed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's been a joy to worship with all of you, even in our isolated states. The warmth, the love of Jesus Christ continues to flow into our hearts and minds. We love worshiping with all of you. If you haven't had the opportunity, please do check us out on gracelutheran.tv for our devotions that happen Monday through Thursday, as well as our Bible studies. Our final hymn this morning will be Christ the Lord is Risen Today.